Now the last presentation for today is uh, by Dr. Jatinda Bhatia. She is going to talk about competence assessment in medical laboratories. Dr. Jatinda Bhatia is a pathologist and she runs her own training center, a very popular one. Dr. Jatinda. Uh, yeah, my brief uh, intro is already there on the slide. And I'll start with my presentation. I've been given 10 minutes, so I'll not take more than that. Uh, and the topic is competence assessment. So it is a little different from what we have been uh, you know, observing for the past two days, more of technical things. Uh, Dr. Banali has given a very good view about the uh, Six Sigma. And uh, I feel that uh, Dr. Thupil and Dr. Anand have really followed the speed plus quality together. Six Sigma has been followed in our uh, uh, conference also to achieve the goal what we had thought of. So competence assessment, what is it? When we talk in the language of uh, the standard, the standard says that the competence of every employee who is there in the laboratory should be checked against the managerial as well as the technical responsibilities. As we all know that every employee who is working in the laboratory has a specific job role. They have a specific uh, goals to meet. And in the laboratory, both type of employees are there, managerial as well as technical. And as and as the corporatization is increasing, the managerial role is also becoming very, very important. Though as pathologists and doctors, the technical role has much more significance as well. So why, why do we need to do competence assessment? Three reasons. It's a requirement of the standard, so it is following a clause 5.1.6. Second, it is the requirement of the organization. How organization would come to know that who is performing better, who has to go up, who has to go up in the ladder. Third, for the employee himself, if he's competent, if he's following certain protocols and he's achieving the goals, means he can step up very easily. And these days it has become, you know, that uh, uh, the appraisals are not age-based the way they used to be in the government sector. The appraisals are more competence-based. If somebody performs well, goes up in the ladder faster. So when should it be done? We talk about that we should be giving trainings time to time to our employees. So competence assessment should be done after every training. Every training there should be a test and on based on that test, it can be a written test, it can be a, a, a verbal test. The candidate should be given some marks which makes a base that how he is performing in the day-to-day -day trainings and how is he learning. Then, reassessment shall take place at the regular intervals. Retraining shall occur whenever necessary. So if you find that the training has not really benefited to the candidate or his competence is not that much, that gives you a clue not only about the competence of the candidate, but about the competence of the trainer also, I would say. If the training is not good, the performance would also not be good. So you can assess the competence of both trainer and the trainee in this way. Then another, there should be a regular schedule. Regular schedule in the sense that every three months or every six months there is a competence assessment. So how can it be assessed? Very beautifully, interestingly, standard has given tabulated points, you know, A, B, C, D. The points how we should assess the competence of a employee. All the employees, they are working under your supervision. Definitely, anybody sitting at the top cannot judge all the employees, all the team. So it is again step ladder pattern. There has to be a reporting system that the baseline technologists are reporting to one step higher, then they are reporting to one step higher, and ultimately the boss. So this competence assessment is also done in a step ladder manner. So the reporting authority will make a category, they will make points under which the competence of a particular employee has to be judged. Keeping in mind 
both managerial activities as well as the technical activities. So one simple method is direct observation. How he is performing his test daily, how he is handling the equipment, how he is handling his work. Maintenance. Almost all the technologists are dealing with one or the other equipment. So how they are maintaining their equipment, how they are maintaining their documentation, how they are maintaining their records, that becomes one point of assessment. Monitoring and recording the reporting of the examination results and reviewing their records. So both these areas again give you a clue about how the person is behaving. I'll just give you one example. Uh, as a chief uh, lab services North India with Metropolis Healthcare, there were around 27 labs which were reporting to me. Now it was very, very difficult, you know, to really judge how anybody is behaving and how they are uh, doing their work. So I had kept one quality indicator which really helped me. And that indicator was that addition of any report, once a report goes out, review of report, that control I had kept with myself. Now whatever is happening, you know, within the lab, it's okay. They are changing the report, they are redoing, they are doing whatever. But the moment a report goes out in the public, and now a change is required, that becomes a concern. That becomes a concern of the reputation of the laboratory, of the people working there. So that control we had not given locally. So what I used to do, that anybody having any problem and needs to review the report would write a mail to me, I'll check what is the reason, and then we will decide about it. And that gave a picture not only about one particular lab director, that gave me a picture about all the employees. How? For example, from our Bareilly report, what used to happen? Every other day, there's a mail, Madam, we want to review the report, we want to change the report. And I would see, what's the problem? The problem is that uh, the spelling mistakes in the name, mistakes in male or female, age. Clear indication, who's at fault. So anybody who's sitting at the reception or who's accessing the report, the data is not a capable person. So from somewhere else, if it is like that the report itself is wrong, that means the pathologist is not checking the reports properly. So from any kind of mistake, what is the basis could tell me how a particular kind of employee is behaving. Then assessment of problem solving skill. This is I think one skill which is very, very important to judge. Most of the people technically you would find that if they have good backgrounds, they are doing the things very well. This is one skill which is very, very variable. You would see in your laboratories that some people, you know, the moment there is a problem, they'll be panicked. They'll say, oh, what to do now? I'm stuck. You know, their mind doesn't work and they feel they're into the problem. You'll see other employees who will, wherever there is a problem, they'll come and ask, what happened? Is there any problem? And they would like to solve. Okay, let me help. Let me find out. And you'll see that those people who have these problem-solving skills can be very good team leaders because they know how to handle other people, how to solve the issues of others, not only theirs. So I think this is, again, one criteria of competence which is very, very important to judge when you are appraising or when you are giving marks to your employees. Then examination of specially provided samples. So this is, again, the clause given in the standard when you have given them a specific work, as I told you earlier also, tests can be one thing, or you have assigned a particular job to them that, okay, you do these tests, and especially for, uh, I would say, uh, professionals where there is uh, not only the uh, machine-related work, but where like uh, peripheral smears have to be checked, or the CITO report has to be given. This kind of assessment sometimes become very important that you've given them some problem cases and then judged how competent they are and how do they make the diagnosis. For professionals, once it is competence for a technical employees or competence for a managerial level, it's very easy. But for professionals, you have to be very, very careful. Because professional opinions are something which we all know in our profession can't be one, two, three, four, five. This is wrong, this is right. So there is no clear demarcation between the rights and wrongs. So there you have to make the criteria 
in a different way in such a way that where you take opinions from multiple people and then you make a judgment whether it is right or it is wrong and that is where you know uh, i would say the equas which we are following they also help how they are able to solve those problems how they are managing their internal quality controls so overall picture of a professional how he is managing his problems or how he is uh, showing his competence comes into play other than these criteria i would say uh, certain other uh, factors which are very important are the responsibility how much responsibility people can take their punctuality their behavior towards their team member whether they are uh, you'll see certain people all the times you know they would be looking for faults in others and certain people who will be trying to cover everybody and help each other so not only i would say the technical part or the managerial part but overall personality behavior of a person is again a factor which you should keep and you should be uh, keeping it as one of the important parts in the criteria so this is one example for example uh, in our laboratories normally what we do is that we have set in certain criterias and we have kept the marks against those criterias and those criterias are then we we have kept a scoring you know for example a particular person is receiving a particular score so his appraisal would be so and so if somebody is achieving less than that so you all know there are certain criterias which are quantitatively measured and then these people are given the scoring and appraisal accordingly so basically this was what what i wanted to discuss i want to thank uh, dr thupil and dr anand to give me this opportunity thank you very much thank you dr jatinder uh, unfortunately we have no time for questions because we have to move to the other hall for this i request the chairperson to please hand over the memento and the certificate to dr jatinder I also request chairperson to